Hello and welcome back to the Dan BTF YouTube channel. I'm here with another football related upload. Now today's video is not going to be GeoGuessr or Sporkle. Uh, today's video we are going to be predicting um, how we think Euro 2020, obviously played in 2021, uh, is going to go and eventually who is going to win the tournament. As you can see, I will be using uh, the Telegraph's um, Euro 2021 predictor um and we'll go through each group um the order we think the teams will finish and then obviously um the knockout stages who will come up against who um i guess i want to just say you know i'm gonna go i'm just gonna be making these guesses um or these predictions based off of just feeling just vibes um i'm sure your uh predictions are going to be vastly different um, hopefully no one gets too upset with where I put them in the eventual um, group standings. Um, and yeah, you're more than welcome to let me know in the comments below how you think the tournament's going to go uh, and who could potentially um, be a good underdog to back uh, or who you know might be a favourite that just rolls the whole competition and goes all the way and lifts the trophy at the end. Um, please do let me know in the comments below. I think we've already had a question of the video before as to who you think will win. Uh, the Euro, so I will uh, propose the question of the video, um, who will be the top scorer uh, during this tournament? So who will be the Euro 2020 played in 2021? Top scorer, drop that in the comments below. That is the question of the video. Um, let's get on with this. So first of all, I'm going to go through each group and pick my group winner. Now, Italy is going to be my group winner for uh, Group A. Uh, group A there, Turkey, Italy, Wales, and Switzerland. Um, Italy on great form uh, at the moment. Um, and yeah, I can't see them slipping up. Managed by Roberto Mancini, I believe. Um, group B, Denmark, Finland, Belgium, and Russia. Um, certainly the world rankings or the UEFA coefficient thing um actually i think that's something different but the world rankings um suggest that belgium will come first in that group um, and will come to the second place after then we have group c which is the netherlands ukraine austria and north macedonia um most football fans would find it pretty difficult to to not pick the netherlands as the winner of this group um and I'm going to have to agree with them. So I'll go for the Netherlands there. Um, they'll be hoping to have uh, Virgil van Dijk back. But I, 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 don't, I don't know what the latest is on that injury. Let me know in the comments if you, if you know um, where they're at with that. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Um, England, Croatia, Scotland and the Czech Republic um, are Group D. I actually think this is the second strongest group Um in the tournament uh czech republic are on good form at the moment scotland is is scotland they've done really well to qualify for the tournament they're going to have incredible support at the tournament um and croatia are you know one of england's um toughest opponents over the last sort of 20 years uh and obviously they knocked us out of the <coughs> um of the 2018 uh, World Cup just gone. So I think I think England will have enough to win the group. Um no actually I don't. I'm going to go with Croatia to win the, to win the group here. Um I just I'm I'm going to I'll probably be putting England second, but I'm going to go for an upset in the group stages and that Croatia win the group so there's there's the first upset um then we have spain sweden poland and slovakia in group e um again spain are kind of coming back into form now obviously they dominated world football um from sort of 2007 to, to 2012 2013 um i think they're good enough to 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 best these three um and then this is the real group of death um we have hungary portugal france and germany now my first thought was that one of these teams goes out in the group stage but actually that's not the case 
um, some of the third place teams do go through to the knockout stages. So I think based on the fact that they're going to be playing in uh, the Alliance Arena for I think their first two games, if not all three of their group games, I'm putting Germany through as the winners of that group. Um, but I actually think in terms of squads, Germany's probably the weaker um, team, man for man, out of out of these three. And Hungary are no, uh, you know, no slouches either. They're going to challenge all three of these teams during their games. Um, so let's go for our second place teams in each group. Um, and this is where it gets pretty much. I'm just basing it off of um, what I, yeah, what I think, just off vibes. Um, classically, Switzerland are very hard to break down in tournaments. Um, I could see them getting three draws from all of these teams. Um, so I'm going to put Switzerland as my second place there. Uh, then we have Denmark, Finland, and Russia. Um, again, Denmark probably have for me the the better team out of those three um russia are a mixed bag you're not really ever sure what um what kind of team is going to show up for major tournaments so russia could be an upset um but i'm going to go with denmark second in that group now we have ukraine austria and north macedonia um north macedonia have, have you know gotten to this tournament against the odds um and i think they recently beat germany right so i think that they're not going to finish last in the group um and i actually think they've got as much chance as as, as ukraine or austria as well of of finishing second so i'm actually going to put north mass through as second place in the group uh, England, I've already said, I think England will finish um, in the top two of that group. I'm going with Croatia to just um, beat them. And then we go to Group E. Um, not sure about the fitness of, of um, Lewandowski. Um, and Poland at Wembley recently were not too impressive. Um, so I will go for a Zlatan-led Sweden to finish second in that group. Um, not too sure about Slovakia. I think, I mean, Hamsik is the one player that we that we all know, or Slovakian. Um, I think uh, Martin Skirtle as well would be a Slovakian. But Sweden, I'm going to back um, to go through. Pretty consistent at major tournaments, usually make it through to that second uh, stage. Um, now, who will finish second in this group? Um... I'm going to have to go with Portugal. I think Portugal have Portugal and France have the best two squads in this tournament. Um and I know I've gone for Germany first, but that's based on the fact that they get to play their games at home. Portugal, I'm going to put a second and I will put it in early doors here as third place France, Hungary out. Um <clears throat> now, Wales or Turkey, who goes through? Turkey, um, again, have had a, f a few good uh, results recently. I think they beat the Netherlands. Um, Burak Yilmaz scored a, a hat-trick um, against the Netherlands. So, they're looking good. Wales, sort of, in the last 10 years, you could never really overlook Wales because of Gareth Bale and, and Aaron Ramsey. Um, and then a really kind of um, brilliant squad vibe. I think there's some doubts there with um, the management side of things. Bale's hardly, you know, even a shadow of the player that he once was. Ramsey, you know, it's probably too much on his shoulder. So I, I think Turkey um, get third place. And unfortunately, I'm sorry, Wales, um, but I'm putting you as fourth place in the group. That group... All of these groups could change massively. Um, as I said before, Russia, we don't really know um, which, uh, you know, what kind of level of form Russia will come into this tournament with. So I think based on that, we'll put the Finns through in third place. Now we have Austria and Ukraine. Um... 
this one again is a bit of a coin toss i think north mass austria and ukraine could all finish in any formation i mean that's that's captain obvious there but um i'm going to put through uh i'll go with ukraine uh, on that one so austria finishing um, bottom of that group then we have scotland and czech republic the czech republic have been really really good recently as i said um the two west ham um guys have been playing well for them i think suchek got a hat trick uh recently um for the czech republic but having said that home advantage um playing at hampton i think we're going to put the scots through uh third place in that group now we have poland and slovakia um, we'll put Poland through as third place. So then that goes on to the third place rating here. So make sure you have selected a third place team in each of the groups above. Uh, then pick your top four best third place teams. The ones you think will finish the group stages with the most points. So this is where it gets tricky because groups like this, I mean, obviously you go right France are the best team on that list but they would have to get the most points. And I think there will be some third place teams. You'd think most third place teams will have three points. I think France might finish third with four. So they would beat Hungary and then they would get a draw against one of these and lose to the other. So that's what I'm going for. Um, we will put through Scotland because they're going to get a win at home. Um, Turkey. Mm. Yeah, I think we put Turkey through. And then Poland in their group here. And then that means we lose um, Finland and Ukraine in the early stages. So now here's our round of 16. I, th I think it kind of gets a little bit easier to select um, the winners and losers here um, in this early round just because of the way tournament seeding um, goes. So I'm going to have obviously Italy through in the first round. Um, we say goodbye to North Macedonia. Um, not the kind of best fixture here. Um, Switzerland versus Denmark, but I could see an upset. I could see the Danes winning. That's a very winnable um, round of 16 game for the Danes. Obviously, Cash Bushmichael, um in goal for them is is a big plus, and Ericsson's had a few more minutes um, this season, and um, they got the guy uh, Braithwaite, isn't it, at um, Barcelona, who's who's not doing. Uh, well, he's got some minutes at least. Let's let's leave it at that. Switzerland, a decent enough team. You know they're going to be solid. They're not going to um, concede too many goals. But I don't know. Starman, uh, Jordan Shakiri um, hasn't played an awful lot of football for Liverpool this year. Um, so yeah, I'm putting the Danes through in that one. Uh, Belgium against Poland. I'm going with the Belgians. Um, blockbuster fixture here if we get this um the netherlands versus france i think france take that i think france take that just um purely based on the strength of their squad so you know they could be finishing third in their group and still going through to the quarterfinals at the moment then we get england sweden which is kind of a classic tournament uh fixture for us and i think we take that um flashbacks to i think um 20 it would have been 2018 we played sweden right in uh in the quarterfinals i think so we beat colombia then we played sweden and then we lost to um croatia in the semi um germany taking on turkey um a lot of um german players uh, of uh, turkish heritage of course um 
so that would be a, a very um, hotly contested game. But yeah, I think Germany take that. Um, Spain versus Scotland, I don't see an upset there. And Portugal, I think, would have enough to oust uh, Croatia. So that brings us on to the quarterfinals, um, where we have England versus Germany, Belgium versus Italy, France, Denmark, and Spain, Portugal. I mean, if if the tournament has these quarterfinals, it's just going to be an absolute joy um, to watch. Now, the first one I'll go for, because I think it's uh, an easy one to predict, is I think France beat Denmark. Um, England versus Germany uh, is obviously very historic fixture. Um, we think back to 1966. Um, but then you've got, I think, 96, right? We played the Germans. Um, 2010, we played uh, Germany in, in Bloemfontein, and, and Frank Lampard scored that goal, the goal that never was. Um, do we defeat Germany in the quarterfinals? And I'm going to say yes, we do. Um, <laughs> some of you are very laughing right now at home at the delusion of a, of, a, of an England fan or of an Englishman, but I'm going to say England beat Germany in the quarterfinals. Um, then we have Belgium taking on Italy. Now, two, you know, one very informed team and and one, you know, highly highly ranked team. Um, Roberto Martinez still managing the Belgian national team, I I believe. Um, arguably the best creative player in the world in in Kevin De Bruyne. Um, we have Romelu Lukaku, who is on you know the f form of his life, arguably, um, and a whole host of of other sort of um, squad players that that make Belgium an incredible force. And I can't go against them, so I'm going with Belgium. Um, beating Italy in the quarterfinal. Now, Spain versus Portugal. We had this fixture um, as well at uh, the World Cup in 2018. Um, it was 3-3. Ronaldo with the last-minute free kick. Any of these sort of throwback events that I'm talking about, some of them I probably have gotten wrong, and it's like it was 2016 or something like that, but just bear with me, just bear with me, I'm riffing, I'm riffing here, uh, but I'm going with Portugal, I, I think Portugal um, are the stronger team right now um, through the squad, now, semi-finals, England versus Belgium, and France versus Portugal, now, I'm sort of regretting this one i th i feel like maybe germany do win that game but england gareth southgate's men with jude bellingham uh and declan rice holding that midfield down um you've got mason mount jack grealish and um phil foden and then harry kane up top uh i think we come up short in the semi-finals once again um, much like the uh, the third place playoff in 2018, we lose to Belgium. Uh, so Belgium advance through to the final. Then we have a repeat of our group stage game, Group F, uh, between France and Portugal. And who goes through here? So you've got, in my opinion, the two best squads in the tournament. Um, France pretty much have a man, like three or four people for each position in the squad. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo playing in his, his probably his final um, Euros tournament, almost certainly his final um, Euros tournament. Um, Bruno Fernandes. Um, you've got uh, the uh, centre-back at City, Ruben Diaz. Um you know the, the the whole team all the way through um all the all the wolves guys um diego jota um yeah a lot of good talent in that portuguese team and i i, I personally think portugal win that game um barring some injuries you know obviously portugal i think are a little bit more vulnerable to to injuries and tournament fatigue maybe than france but 
I think if Portugal's squad stays fit, we get a Portugal-Belgium final. And Portugal at this stage would be trying to um, defend their European title, something that's not been done since Spain in um, 2012 uh, defended their 2008 title. So, Belgium versus Portugal, who wins the big one? Um, and I'm going to say, ah, this is a tough one. This is a very tough one. I think this, I think Belgium need the win more. Um, obviously Portugal with that success, um, in 2016, uh, But Belgium, I don't know. They've been there, done that. They've got the experience. I think it's going to be heartbreak for the Belgians again. And I'm going to go with Portugal to win the tournament. Uh, so Euro 2020 winner, Portugal. 8% of players also predicted Portugal to win. Um, most predicted to win by winners uh, is France, uh, 20%. England, 15%. We love to dream. Uh, and Belgium, 15%. Uh, so there you have it. I will leave a link uh, in the description if you want to um, do your own predictions. Um, some of you may have picked up that link uh, at the start of the video and, and did your predictions and then see how they go against mine. Um, as I say, they are very much predictions and I hope, I certainly hope that the tournament turns out differently um, and England make it all the way to the final. Um, but we shall see. Uh, how it goes the tournament kicks off on the 11th of june and runs through to the 11th of july so we all have that to look forward to um if you enjoyed the video uh please do give it a thumbs up uh if you don't already subscribe to the channel uh i'm going to leave a link over here in a second uh but you can also hit that subscribe button below uh and there's more videos up here there's some probably some stadiums content over here as well and as i said you can hover over this and subscribe. Uh, and guys, until then, I will see you all on the next video. Bye-bye.